Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 115. This episode is Amanda Wirtz, who is delightful. She was so great and so fun to talk to. Like, I knew she was going to be a good time before having her on, but she even exceeded those expectations. She's so cool. We talk about how her love of movies growing up eventually led her to go to college for communications, and then she ended up getting into improv from a newspaper ad, of all things. We talk about her love of improv, how it's grown over the years, and how it eventually led to her working at conventions, doing warm-ups before big panels. She talks about working different crowds, playing different games. She has a great story about an improv game she played at Celebration one year that's just fantastic. And then she gives great advice for anyone who's looking to get into that kind of thing, as well as what improv has done for her in pretty much every aspect of her life. It was really, really cool. It was great getting to know her. And uh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Amanda's fantastic. So without further ado, please enjoy the Interesting Podcast episode number 115 with Amanda Wirtz. Theme song time. It's actually nice to talk to someone who's in the same time zone. Yeah. Very Laura. rare. Very rare. A lot of times I'll mix it up accidentally. So I'll be like, all right, cool. I'll see you at one o'clock tomorrow. And then one o'clock rolls around and I'm like, all right, here we go. I'm ready. And they're an hour behind. And I'm like, perfect. Perfect. Ah, I guess Good for the too. next hour I'll be, <laughs> I'll be right here. <laughs> you could message them and be like, hey, just real fast. Do you have Skype? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. it's a it's a two part survey now. Do you have Skype and do you know how to use it? <laughs> great, great, great. Got it. Nobody would come brain, on. This is so dumb, but in my brain, I was like, oh, that's just like a term people use for like FaceTime, maybe. It's and like then, Kleenex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh, oh no, it's real. And then I realized yeah. that I couldn't figure it out, and now here I am. But you know, it's okay. It's, you are you are among the greats, really. Mm. past guests who don't understand Skype. And Perfect. it's a gamble for me because I'm like, yeah. well, I hope this works. Also, you never realize how many people are named the same thing until you get uh, Skype. <laughs> got it. I don't even know like what my little, I just signed in and I don't even know if my if I have like a, a name or something. It just sort of allowed me to go. So. There you go. That's better, better for me. I always forget to ask people for their Skype information. I'm like, well, let's try that. Oh, there's 25 <laughs> of them. Ooh, better start calling. <laughs> See what happens. See what happens. Yeah. Uh, so what do you need? What do you need from me? But unless we've already begun. This will all be edited later on. Okay. Because okay. okay. I don't want to say I know what I'm doing by now, but, <laughs> but I've done did this I a couple of times. More than a hundred episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too. It doesn't really count. The first 25 are not good. Um, <laughs> aren't none of them are yeah it's just how it yeah exactly just Everyone's if you could lower you. your standards now great. that great. would do me a solid perfect yeah perfect. yeah but I, no, nobody nobody's first couple of anything are good no so, i agree i agree which is kind of the hard thing i feel like doing any sort of creative endeavor to like suck for a little while yeah oh it, yeah it's awful i mean to be fair i still think i suck but that doesn't matter that doesn't matter <laughs> Well, Brian, you're doing a great job so far, and oh, I'm having a time talking. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> but yeah, Florida, it's nice, it's nice to have someone in the same time zone to where yeah. we're always at. Like, I, can't, I don't have to be like, what time is it where you are? I know what time it is. It's, it's, two, it's two o'clock. It's, it's All right, so you're ready to do this thing? Is there anything I need to prepare or set up? Or? No, this is actually the show. It's just hanging out and this talking and whatnot. Yeah. But I, so okay. I did have a question for you. Please. You're in Florida. Are yeah. you from Florida? I am not. Ha! Nobody's from Florida. Nobody. Uh, My wife is, but no. No. Yeah. Amanda, come on. <laughs> God, God. Who's from here? <laughs> yeah, I really know. And where are you from originally? North Carolina. You? New Jersey. Ooh. There you go. Well, did you, well, fun fact. Did you have an accent and lose it? So here's what I think happened. Thank you for saying I don't have an accent. Yeah. Um, here's what I think happened. <laughs> 
Um, I grew up in New Jersey for 18 years, and then I moved to Boston for school for five years. Wow. And then I moved to Florida, and I've been here for last year, like 12 years. You're, mm, and yeah. I think I lost it. I think along the way, wow. like all of them, it all just sort of turned into nothing. Interesting. I'm okay with that. I mean, your math doesn't add up because there's no way <laughs> the time. It does. I moved here in 2007. No, I don't. Yeah, think so. I don't think so. I did. I did. I moved wow. here in 07, and I've been here ever since. And it's real weird. I was like, I haven't been here for more than ten years, and then I'm like, oh, it's 2020. Yeah, great, 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 <laughs> great, great, great. Um, so yeah, so I've been here a real long time, which is very weird because it's it's slowly becoming the place I've lived longest, which is odd. Yeah, is Jersey home <laughs> when you think in um, your head? That's a great question. I don't know. Um, Cause I feel like, I mean, I absolutely formative years, all yeah. that sort of. Business. I mean, your whole I'm, life really 18. Yeah, I love growing up there. Mm. Um, I, I, and I very much, I, I very much enjoy living in Florida, but I don't, I don't relate to a lot of Florida. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Um, I'd be worried so, if you did in some regards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's, um, I love living here. I love the weather. Uh, I love all the people I know. I love what I get to do here. Like I love all that stuff. But um, I, I just have this weird barrier saying I relate or I'm from here, whereas I'm proudly like New Jersey, which yeah. is you know, the butt of everything. So yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I think Florida is lovely, and I think I just after this much time, I probably need to get more comfortable being like, heck yeah, that's where I'm from. Yeah, I have the same thing. I have the same thing, except the difference is. I think mine might be a little worse because I've been down here since I was six, but I'm still what like, the... I'm not from here. No, Come God, on. Please. Yeah, please. Listen. Zero to six? That's yeah. your years. Yeah, I know. You... That's what, you know, I, yeah, I still have, when I go back home, see, home to me is North Carolina, but it's weird, but I don't know why because I've been, maybe because I went back like every couple of years, so it like stayed fresh, you know what I mean, as opposed to maybe. having a, a separation from it. But when I go back, I have a super accent. And I was like, what is happening right now? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 18. So, yeah, you're like legit from Jersey. Yeah. I'm from New Jersey. Not bad. It's, uh, Not bad. But I don't, I don't have a ton of family there anymore. And especially my parents moved here a couple years ago. And so oh. it's really, there is yeah, you're not... Yeah, not much of a reason for me to go. So it's it's weird. I guess technically, yes, it is home. And I have like a bajillion wonderful memories there. Yeah. But... I haven't been back to New Jersey proper in, in a while. Hmm. So what did you go to school for then? Jersey, Boston, I, Florida. Yeah, Jersey, Boston, Florida. The classic trio. Um, I went to school for, I studied communications with a focus in media. Nice. Um, that which, came in handy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was fine. I went to Northeastern University. Mm -hmm. I loved living in Boston. And I think probably the thing I got most out of Boston and out of college was uh, figuring out uh, improv and improv comedy and stage, stage and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, communications, I feel like <laughs> my parents kind of convinced me to I wanted to do like theater or film or something like that. I was very focused on that. I did a lot of film stuff and I thought that was going to be it for me. Yeah. Uh, and they were sort of coaxing in a way to be like, why don't you major in something a little more general? Sure. <laughs> and that's maybe more marketable. And so I took, I was like one credit shy of like a film minor. I just didn't end up doing it. I just took a million film classes. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I, genuinely, like besides you know getting a degree and being able to be like I graduated, um, it's where I really uh, fell in love with improv and learned a, a lot more about it and you know how to do all that. And that's sure. kind of what I did in college. So was that was film and stuff that was something that you were always interested in? Yeah, um, I don't know where it started. It's so funny. My parents just, uh, we were away for the weekend and my parents just found like a whole bunch of boxes of like everything. Um, and I did this like film program the year before that, like the year before I went into my senior year of high school, I did this like month long film program at a, at a college and did all this crazy stuff, like super hardcore film stuff that I know I walked away being like, Oh no, oh not that. <laughs> <laughs> like it was this like I, I got I wrote this script to get in and I got in and it was this whole big thing. And then I walked away being like, so glad I did that. I yeah. think that's 
at like working with like 35 millimeter film and doing it's like not this is very you understand a little little different a little different (laughs) yep yeah I was like I don't know if this is what I wanted to do so then I think my senior year is where I really did like figured out what it is and yeah I think I just never really got back into it so yeah though my parents kind of coaxed me into doing it I think it was probably the right move yeah um because I don't think I was ever going to be destined to be doing like you know film and that sort of thing but yeah I grew up I've always been obsessed with movies um I owe it to my brother um I have a great older brother who has phenomenal taste uh, and so I was just like, I want to do what he does and I want to watch all the things he watches. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's the one who introduced me to Star Wars. He's the one that introduced me to Back to the Future. Nice. Um, he and I used to create like commentary tracks using <laughs> for oh. like movies to watch. <laughs> and we would do like jokes and do like uh, almost like riff tracks for children. Who, that was probably extremely unfunny. Amazing. Um, yeah. And so I just sort of, he was sort of my influence when it came to pop culture and that sort of stuff. And so I, I totally owe him for having any sort of taste in, in movies and that sort of thing. Sure. Sure. I like that. I like that a lot. So then when did you decide that you wanted to do comedy? Cause mm-hmm. watching and loving things is one thing, <laughs> but wanting to do something is different and wanting to do comedy is another <laughs> layer of different. Um, so, uh, in eighth grade at my school Best was the big grade. musical. It was the only, it was the first time that I had any opportunity really to do like a production. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was too afraid to be, to own the fact that I'm not like a superb singer. Um, I do a ton of musical improv now, but I'm not like a trained soprano by any means. Sure. Um, yeah. and so I think think that's where I really was like oh this is a fun thing and so I had like a very small role but I turned it into doing a lot of like the backstage stuff and like became an assistant director and really loved figuring all of that Mm -hmm. and then when I got into high school um I auditioned for the musical and they were like no thank you Um, (laughs) but I'm an I'm an assistant director excuse me you read my resume I've done a one part yeah um (laughs) And so, yeah, I think I was just trying to find something where I couldn't, where it didn't have to rely on singing. And so my, my mom found an ad in a newspaper, Brian. Oh my goodness gracious. Way (laughs) back when. (laughs) Paper. Uh, and it was for improv auditions for like teenagers at a local theater. Really? And I was like, don't really know what that is, but okay. And so I remember rolling into these auditions and just having no business. No business. Be Which fair. are the best kind to roll into, really? For sure. What yeah. did I have to lose? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and so I ended up making the the troupe at this theater, and then wow. that was kind of the trajectory from there. It was just like, oh, I'm obsessed with what this is, it's and it kind of helped me see like all of the things I loved. It was like, oh, uh, thinking on your feet and uh, being completely silly and free and there's nothing to memorize and you don't have to sing and you don't have to do this. It, it really helped me grow um, and sort of kind of, it, it made me, I, I just fell in love with it right away. Oh, interesting. Yeah, from a so newspaper I've been doing props, ad. Props. Yeah, I know, all from a, an ad in a paper, news, a, a newspaper. That's pretty uh, good. Yeah, and so, you know, I've been, doing improv for like 20 plus years now which is crazy Ooh. and now i get paid to do it which oh. if you told me oh. old self that that would be wild yeah take that mom <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it was just something that like always whenever i wasn't quite sure like what was next for me or i wasn't feeling quite right about my path like i played soccer in high school and i knew that was not for me um Every time I wasn't quite sure, improv somehow popped up again. Like an improv team started in my high school and I was like, oh, like right around the time that I really started getting disinterested in soccer, I sort of started seriously considering auditioning for that and then became part of that team. And then it was like, oh, snap, that's, yep, got me right back into feeling okay again. This is the thing. Um, And then the same happened. I did that all through high school and then the same happened to me in college when I, I had a real tough first semester Mm -hmm. um in boston uh i just i I couldn't find my my people i just um it was really hard for me um and so i was walking around one day and i saw signs for improv auditions and it was just the same sort of thing where i was like i don't write i don't quite feel right and then i found improv again and i made the team my freshman year and it changed everything Um, 
So yeah, so it it continues to be a thing that like I just it means so much to me, and it's my my favorite thing in the world. So and it's done pretty good for my for my life, which is crazy. <laughs> I'd say so. I'd say so. It's interesting. I, it's also I've heard a lot of people who've taken improv like outside of like high school drama club and like the improv things that we did there. I haven't really done anything like that, but I've been to a ton of improv shows. Mm-hmm. They're super fun. But they're not all great. I'll no, tell you that. <laughs> no, that's true. When you're in the back of a restaurant and you're like, all right, well, somebody's suggestion. Pasta. All right. Yeah, we heard this one. I, I've, I've yeah. done my share of uh, bar prov for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's interesting talking to people who do improv and who love it as well, like you, that like it. it's this thing that's so much more than what it appears to be. Because you, yeah. get, you get so much more out of it because it's like, I don't know how to explain it. Like theater, you have that give and take between the characters and the audience, right? So you have yeah. that immediate return. When you have a laugh or a moment, the audience gives you that immediate return. Whereas improv, it's like that turned up to 11 because all this is made up on the spot. And you yeah. know you're not going to get this again. It's yeah. like when a comedian does crowd work. You're like, oh, this is, yeah. for, this is for us. Look it's at just this. for me. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it's the best, and it's it's something I do. You know, I do shows every weekend, and we do a whole bunch of different shows at this theater. Um, you know, we have our standard like you know, uh, uh, dual and like kind of like challenge shows and that sort of stuff at like competitions on the weekends. Mm-hmm. But then we do like these really weird like we do a, a four person musical with a three piece band, and you know, we wow. just we each get a suggestion and do a full musical two acts like just based off one suggestion and. It's it's really cool. I have uh, a, a two woman show I do um, where we do like we talk to the audience, but we also do music and yeah. It's just it's it's an incredible outlet. I and it's something that like allows me now that I host a comic cons. It yeah. allows me that I don't care what stage I'm on or who how late someone is to a panel or how long they need me to stretch. I, I don't, it doesn't phase me anymore because I know I could talk forever if I needed to and I could find anything. Like it's given me that confidence. Sure. Was that something that you learned over time and kind of honed that ability to just be like, out of thin air, wah, this. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, improv, I mean, that's literally what improv is, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, trying to figure it out um, as you go from nothing um, and finding those, the shiny, right? Finding like, oh, oh that's, that's, that's the thing we should follow. Right. Um, right. But it actually, it's funny because when I first uh, was asked um, when um, DJ Elliot, who I'm sure you're familiar Amazing. with, DJ, um, he's the one I work with the most and he's, he's, I work for his company, Elite Beats, and they, um, right he on. called me and reached out to me and said, hey, I want you to, I think you'd be really good at hosting Comic-Cons. And I was like, oh, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, and? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and so uh, he was like, I want you to take a look at what we do. Come out to Seattle. So, uh, you know, he flew me out to Seattle for Emerald City Comic Con in 2017. Oh, nice. And um, it was him and Ruben. I don't know if you've ever seen Ruben on stage. Probably. Um, he doesn't Probably. usually come to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, so okay. him. But um, I walked in and I remember it was right during his warm up. Because that's what I do, by the way. Like, I mean, just backstory. I do warm up for Comic Con. I know you yeah. know this, but I'm I mean, sure. I may have been <laughs> attended before. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do uh, warm up and I sometimes moderate for panels at Comic Con. But mm-hmm. yeah, so I walked in while uh, into this huge, huge, huge room uh, as Ruben was going. And I remember sitting down and I was like, okay, I got to run back up. He's like, you know, just watch and see what you think. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching him and being like, oh, oh, I. <laughs> I can't, do, I can't do that. Yeah, that's, that's not a big right. room. Yeah, this is what he is doing is completely not me. What he's doing is unbelievable because he was doing dancing and gra- and bringing people up and and saying doing these choreographed moves that he was teaching people and I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. He was wearing this crazy suit. His energy was insane. <laughs> And I remember when it was done, I walked backstage and I just said, I was, I was like, Elliot, I'm really sorry. Like I've you have absolutely misjudged what I do. And he said something to me that has stuck with me for my entire, you know, con hosting. He has said that I don't want you to do what Ruben does. I want you to do what you do. Oh, there you go. And I said, oh, okay. Cause I am a, not a great dancer as <laughs> musical auditions I did will surely uh, agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I'm now, I now own the fact that I'm not a great dancer uh, when I have to do stuff like that. But uh, I watched him again do something and then it made my gears start to turn. And I said, oh, we can do a bunch of improv games. That's where I feel. Right. And so then I started making lists. I took notes because that's who I am. Uh, and I took a bunch of notes and uh, literally maybe a couple panels later, one of the last ones at the end of the day, I said, okay, I want to try something. And they said, okay. Uh, and so we tried a game. I taught them uh, about pickup lines, a game called pickup lines. Amazing. And so we just uh, had the audience come up and people came up that were good with puns. And we had them do like nerdy pickup lines and it was the most fun and I was like okay click yep got it now now I understand again improv saved my life right like it made me like I can't do this oh wait if I can inject this piece of it I know I'll be comfortable and so that's what I've been doing ever since oh that's pretty good once you can understand something you can kind of spin it your way which is the heart of improv really if you understand the scenario and the suggestion you can kind of flip it and give it back yeah so it's it's been really really fun and it's just this weird thing because I feel like my whole existence like all of the skills I've honed over the years has made me like feel very good in this job of like I've got an improv background cool uh I spent my whole life uh watching uh all these sorts of things because of my older brother and got me super into like nerd culture and tv and uh movies and all this sort of stuff and so that has prepared me it's just like in my brain already yeah Uh, you know so it's just these things that I feel like I I feel I, I, I genuinely love doing it. I'm not afraid of like how many people are here or what is this? It just, I love going out there and I love our job because what I get to do is bring people up on stage and make people the star of the show. Yeah. And it, it's, it's the greatest. It's the legitimate greatest job. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty much what my show is. I'm like, hey, look at this person. <laughs> <laughs> you get it exactly. You're like, oh, let me uh, shine a spotlight on this person. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the greatest thing. It's pretty neat. It's also such a specific skill set because, like you said, it's not exactly like one to one hosting conventions, like warm up panels and stuff like that, versus like improv games as well. Yeah. Was there a learning curve to kind of calibrate, or like it just clicked and you're like, "Oh, I I understand this." Um, it's it's interesting. I try not to get too pre planny when you know when I'm out there. I try to have like, okay, these are a couple of options I have, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. because every crowd is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, because every panel is completely different. So if you have, I've learned that um, there are certain groups that are like fully up for like creative punny, uh, putting themselves out there sort of things like. Anytime I have to do anything with Critical Role, oh. like those fans are so like the critters are so clever because they're all D and D kids, yep. right? So they're yep. all like love building stories and coming up with things, and and so like I know I can put out a super creative, crazy storytelling game, and they're like, yes, we will knock this out of the park, yeah. right? <laughs> so like for that group because I've done a couple with them so far and I, so that I know I can throw something crazy. Yeah. Um then there's some that I just I don't know like Harry Potter fans same way like they are up for fun. Yeah. Um and sometimes like at Star Wars Celebration for example you'll have a very technical panel. Right. right? Yeah. You'll have, like <laughs> You know, the uh, behind the scenes, the droids or like uh, visual effects, you know, or whatever it is. And you walk out there and it's a very different audience. You know, right. maybe it's all adults and it's all just like, I'm very, this is something I'm interested in. I don't need necessarily to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's just an example. I'm absolutely not like generalizing. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, but yeah, I think you just have to be totally ready for whatever comes your way and there are times where i'll have something planned and i'll come out and be completely sidetracked by something else that is absolutely happening in this audience where i cannot ignore what's happening and be like no i'd like to push this thing it's like oh clearly some everyone here is cosplaying as something crazy i'm going to change what i'm doing and bring up a fashion show or i'm going to do this or it's very i always try to make it about the audience and what they want i'm also very aware that the warm-up hosts are a de- divisive concept. <laughs> I am not immune to seeing comments. I try to ignore. Yeah. Uh, but I absolutely know that warm-up is not for everybody. I know that some folks would rather just like sit sit down, look at their phones, not... And I absolutely respect that. Yeah. I absolutely respect it. Um, I don't like when they 
find me online and say mean things <laughs> <laughs> about the job I'm there to do. Right. Um, but I absolutely 100% get that. And so I very much try not to um, uh, force anything upon those folks. Like if they want to be by themselves and not participate, that is that is 100% fine. Right. So you're saying it's a bad idea if somebody has their head down to grab their ear and be like, hey, dance. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's not good. hey, sir, will you, I notice you have AirPods in, you're making no eye contact with me. Yeah. Uh, this, you strike this... me as someone who likes to sing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I try very hard to be respectful of that and to read the room. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I'm there to have fun and give away prizes and be silly with everyone. So I'm not going to be like, oh, a bunch of you aren't interested. I'm just going to leave. Right. Uh, you got to get I, out I want... there. Yeah, because there are folks that really, really do love what we do and do want prizes and do want to, you know, do weird all karaoke and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, I, 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 so, I yes, I'm, I'm definitely not uh, living in a bubble where I believe that everyone <laughs> what I do and what our team does. Totally not in a bubble. But it doesn't bother me because it is a genuine joy uh, when folks are having fun and they come up on stage and we have silly conversations or they sing their hearts out or they, you know, kill it in a lip sync contest or, yeah. you know, win game or find some moment and the audience is just like losing their minds, you know, cheering them on. It's, it's the coolest thing. So I, I try not to get too crazy about uh, anything that I, or I know people aren't, you know, excited about it. Sure. I love it. I think it adds to a whole nother level of experience. Like, kind of reminds me of like cruise ships. They do a lot of warm up things in between. Yeah, yeah, as well. yeah. But also, like, I mean, even like late night shows, they have a. Yeah. You don't see it on the TV, oh, but oh, oh. there's warm up hosts. Like that's how it goes. Pretty it's all every, part of the thing. Yeah. Every live TV show. Yeah. Has, almost every live TV show has some sort of warm up act. Crazy, crazy. People just don't know. They just they don't, don't know. know. So yeah, and, you know, it's I I love it so. Yeah. Ha have you ever done stand up? Because <laughs> uh, that sounds terrifying as well. But also, you kind of got to read the room, but still yeah. go out there. Um, I have. I the first time was in. Uh, I tried it in college, and I'm sh I'm sure it was garbage. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, whatever. I, I don't remember anything about like any of my jokes. Um, I have um, a comedy partner that I do uh, my. Uh, I have a podcast and she does, we do like our two women show together, mm -hmm. um, our improv show. And we were asked to do a stand up night as part of like a lineup of all women last year. Mm -hmm. And we were like, Oh, we're, we're not going to do that. And we'll join, we'll join the show, but we're not just going to do straight up stand up. And so we actually ended up doing a little bit of crowd work. And then we just quickly improvised a song about what had just happened. Nice. Um, and it was really fun. And honestly, like it broke up all, the night of like stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. And then we were like, well, we're going to improvise a song for everyone. We're going to talk to you real quick. And then we're just going to turn that into a song. And it was really, really fun. So I would consider doing that again, like something like that with her. Yeah. But stand up on my own. No, 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 no. Right. No, no. Sounds like the worst. Yeah, it's just a super different skill set. Um, as you can, you know, probably have surmised. Like my deal is that I feed off the energy from a crowd, and I love being able to pivot and follow something crazy that happened and go from there. And I, stand up to me feels so alone. It feels. Yeah. Very isolating. I agree. And a lot of times, you know, you get the massive light on you, so you can't even see the crowd, depending yeah. on how it is. And you're yeah. out there putting on an act, and they're watching you, whereas your thing is way more like the veil's broken, and you're like, hey, you, let's do this together. Yeah. It's pretty it, Improv is a, is a team sport, yeah. and that's the best, because even if you're like, oh, God, my, I have totally blanked, yeah. you know that you have someone there who is ready to be like, I will swoop in and help you. Sure. Um, you know, and with, you know, Comic Cons, it's similar where, you know, someone in my, you know, in my little, you know, thing in my ear could be like, hey, we are running 20 minutes behind, you know, we're resetting the clock, you got 20 more minutes. Um, I know that I can look to my DJ, I know that I can walk down the stairs and find, you know, thousands of really great people to chat with and find the next fun thing to do. Sure. So that's so feels though it is, yes, technically me and a DJ on stage. Uh, which is not a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> I consider the entire audience as folks who can uh, talk with me, have fun. Um, and so it feels very much like a team sport still doing uh, hosting a Comic-Con. Sure. So you you have an earpiece in when you're doing all this? 
Uh, sometimes, depending upon the show, depends oh. upon the stage. So, like, sometimes at, uh, like, one stage at a venue at a Comic-Con, I'll have it, and then at another stage, I won't. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it just will depend. Uh, they have what we call the shot clock uh, on the stage, and so oh. I can see it. It's counting down to zero, and in theory, zero <laughs> is when the panel begins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but sometimes, and this happened to me, um, so Star Wars Celebration 2017 in Orlando was my first Comic-Con by myself, because that was like wow. three months after I trained in Seattle. And Ooh. that was part of the reason I was getting trained up for for in Seattle was because they knew there are two stages, uh, or there was a couple of different stages at Celebration, and they wanted me to do one of the stages. Right. Not terrifying at all. <laughs> Eh, it's whatever, you know, not that many people go there, really. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I remember uh, there was a specific panel I was doing and uh, it kept getting delayed. And I remember I was doing we were doing warm up for a long time. Me and uh, my DJ Dave, um, we were doing warm up for a long time. And I was just like I kept and I would keep walking up to the stage real quick just to look. And the clock, it like I swear it would be like ten minutes, and then I would come back after seven minutes, and it would be at like thirteen minutes. And oh. I was just like, oh, okay, oh god. Uh, so having I think this clock is broken. <laughs> yeah, uh, is this broken? Yeah. Um, so having an earpiece in that in those times is really helpful because I don't need to walk back to the stage. Right. Um, there are other times when we'll, I'll have codes with Dave if I don't have an earpiece where he'll play a certain song that tells me, okay, we're oh. or at Star Wars Peek Behind the Curtain. It is the Cantina song. Love it. Uh, that's what we use at Celebration. Uh, as soon as I hear the Cantina song playing, I'm like, oh, oh. Here we go. Uh, got to get my butt up back on stage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of the time I'm just running around the audience. So, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so sometimes I'm in your piece, sometimes I don't. Um, but even just having a shot clock is super helpful um, because, you know, I wear a watch and I know when the panel's supposed to start. Right. But the last thing I want to do is get up there and super enthusiastically introduce someone and they're like, no, 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 they're not. You know, <laughs> they're certainly not here yet. <laughs> That's uh, my time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just walk off stage and drop the mic. And yeah. Then, I'm like, I, I, it said 12.05. That's, that's right, yeah. Think, My contract I, specifically <laughs> said. <laughs> no, and, I, and I think that's the thing. I think we're best when there is some kind of crazy delay, right? right. When uh, an autographing session goes long, or there's crazy traffic from their hotel. Um, you know, if someone's going to be 30 minutes late from a panel, we can still continue to do games and have fun and give out prizes as opposed to people being just constantly thinking about when is this going to start. Sure. Do you find having done improv for so long, has it evolved in any way or is it all about like honing the fundamentals and then just keep going on there to where it gets better on what you know or has the game kind of changed over time? Hmm. Um, you mean like when I do shows like standard like improv shows on the yeah. weekends and stuff? Mm -hmm. um, it's tough because uh, the ensemble that I'm part of um, – um, at the theater in Orlando, SAC Comedy Lab. Of course. Club, um, there's about, I don't know, maybe 30 of us that rotate. Wow. And so depending upon the night, your cast varies wildly. Mm -hmm. um, and so just having completely different cast, you know, different people you're working with make it very different. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I mean, the fundamentals are always the same, right? You're always yeah. supporting. You're always team, you know, playing as a team. You're always yes ending the person mm -hmm. that is a huge pillar of improv for sure yeah. and agreeing and, you know, helping each other out. Um, so those fundamentals always are there. Mm -hmm. um, but we do so many different shows that uh, it, it definitely uh, keeps us on our toes. And, and it's also like any skill where sometimes you're like, man, had a great show tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and then the very next show you do that's just like 30 minutes later is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> you're, I mean, you, you're an actor. You get it. Like yeah. sometimes you're just, like, yes, I'm on fire. Killed it. And then, yeah. And then you're like, I, I, I never need to practice again. Exactly. This is, I figured it out. Is that and then, confidence? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's gone immediately <laughs> uh so i think that's the the cool thing about improv it's it's what i you know because i teach it as well mm -hmm. um at the theater and i always tell my students that the the best and worst thing about improv is that it is instantly gone yeah right so like even if you've had the best show of your life it's totally gone mm -hmm. and if you had the worst show of your life great news it's totally gone yeah uh, so i always tell them not to get so crazy in your head about anything because it, it's 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 gone in an instant. 
Um, So I I try to take my own advice in those moments when I'm feeling pretty low. Yeah. That also makes sense as to why a lot of people who've taken improv has talked about how it's like bled into other aspects of their life. They're like, it really helped me as a person because life is like that. Life keeps on going. Like this too shall pass in good and bad. That's just how it goes. Yeah. It's, it's totally taught me to live in the moment, be supportive of others, like never let somebody just hang if they aren't sure what to say next or they're not sure what to do. It's totally a matter of like, oh, I, I, let me lift you up. Let me help you in that moment. Um, so yeah, it's something that I, I could not recommend enough for folks that that's what I love about the classes. Like, remember I had no business walking into that audition <laughs> right? and we have, you know, level one through, you know, a bunch you know, level four. And then we have like advanced levels at the, at the theater. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I suggest improv to truly anyone who is looking to, you know, whether it's get confident public speaking or to be better at their job, feeling more comfortable giving presentations or just be a better actor. There's so many different things. Just think quicker. There's so many different things that it's good for. And I, like I said, it it has continuously found its way into my life and made my life better. Sure. And so I, I truly couldn't recommend it. If you are in a rut, if you are you know, looking for something to meet new people. And it, it, there are improv classes and theaters everywhere. Uh, and so it doesn't matter where you are, you can find a way to, to do it. It just takes a, a little bit of bravery to do. A little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But especially in those level one classes, it is all about like every, you know, I've had attorneys, I've had, uh, you know, uh, doctors, people who uh, are just, you know, really trying to just get a little bit more comfortable um, and it's, it's, you know, or people who have really, really tough jobs and they just come to have fun and be free and forget it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really just so, so good, um, for, for a million reasons. And so I, I, I really couldn't recommend it enough. Sure. What do you think is the hardest part about improv? Like, what do you find is a thing that gets in a lot of people's way? Mm. Um, I think the, for me, I think the biggest thing is people trying to be funny. Oh, um, good one. Because because you 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 don't. We always talk about that. The best thing about improv is that the fun, I always tell them the funny will come. The funny right. will come. Um, you don't need to walk in. I, it is very clear to me as an improviser when you are bringing in something that you thought of in the car on the way here. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just waiting for their moment. Yeah. You're like, oh, I really hope I can bring <laughs> this line. And it's like, don't don't do that. Be be you. What you are going to say and do, and you, by reacting naturally to what someone is saying, yeah, I promise you, you will find the funniest stuff in those moments. Um, so I think people trying to be funny um, is is a very it's a big lesson to learn because when you see improv, you're like, oh, they're being funny. They're trying to be funny. And it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. They are naturally reacting to one another and trying to be as real as possible. Sure. Um, and the funny comes. Uh, and so I think people just in level one, it's a lot of switching that mindset of like, stop trying to be funny, live in this world for a minute. And I promise that, that it will, it will happen. Right. The zinger is not going to work as well as you think it's, it's going <laughs> to. The zinger never works. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think just getting that across, it, it's a hard thing to, to understand, uh, but it's like, no, just making real world specific conversation is funny because people are like, yes, I relate to that thing. Yeah. Uh, that's what's funny. I always, I always tell them if you ever have seen an improv show, you, the next day at work, you, you couldn't, you describing what happened is never going to land. It is never going to be. That's funny. true. You had to it be there. Is, it is the definition of you had to be there. Yep. And so I always, I refer to it as they're, the things that are funny in improv are non-jokes. The things that make us laugh the most are non-jokes that you cannot describe to other people as jokes. That's true. And so I try to kind of walk people through that example to be like, oh yeah, that's right. The zinger, sure, may be funny out of context out of at work, but the low key, just kind of natural sort of conversation is, is, is not the sort of thing you can describe it. You definitely had to be there. Is it one of those things, like, because improv, by its nature, is on the spot. So, Mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, you Mm -hmm. have the classes and you have the workshops and you have the games that you play. That just kind of builds up the muscle so that at the time of the show, you can just go into it as opposed to any sort of rehearsal process. Exactly. Uh, You know, when you tell people, like, oh, yeah, we got a workshop or we have rehearsal, you know, people are always like, what do you mean you rehearsed in improv? (laughs) 
uh, it's exactly what you described. It, it's like going to the gym, right? It's, you're getting reps in mm -hmm. so that the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you'll feel going in there. Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm so for level four, for example, in, in the classes at the end of that, you have your graduation show. And so what I try to do is cast them in combinations like the night before is our last class the night before the show. And I always try to mix up the combinations of what I'm actually having them do in the show because I never oh. want them to in their head about like, oh, well, me and Brian did, you know, this type of scene last night. And now we're doing it in the show. We're going to totally just do that same. I want to completely right. wash possibility away Smart. and that's a me thing um it's but important. you know that's not like a standard teacher thing necessarily but for me i would never want them to be in a position where they're fighting the instinct to say the same thing they said the night before or the week before right um, but yeah so it's it's totally about getting reps in it's totally about getting comfortable with your troop um comfortable with you know depending upon if you're doing long form or short form improv short form is what people have probably know the most it's what's on like whose line is it anyway where there's like right. games and gimmicks and that sort of stuff um learning the rules and how to be best in those games and gimmicks so it's those sort of things you know, when you're doing short form improv to get the reps in for those specific sort of things that um allow people to feel comfortable once they get out on stage sure do you have a preference between short and long form improv no, yeah. um, I don't. I think, uh, I, and I know people do, but I think, uh, I, I really don't. Um, I, I think they both have their merits. I think in the improv world, short form is looked down upon. Uh, <laughs> Only think, by the snobberies. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it can be looked down upon. It's like, ah, it's gimmicky, it's this, it's that. Mm. Um, but I think it is a great entryway into the the art form mm -hmm. um and so that once you kind of understand those concepts i think then it can pique people's interest into seeing a improvised two-act musical right that's yeah. completely different yeah <laughs> um but at base level is still you know being completely made up um so i really like them both i think they both have merits um and i think uh i think the most like i said the most i think people are familiar with the short form but when you go to you know uh, the big improv theaters that people know of, like, uh, you know, Upright Citizens Brigade and, um, you know, IO and Second City, uh, almost everything they do there is long form. Oh, okay. Yeah. it's a lot of work. Uh, but long form fits into a bazillion different things. You know, it can be you know, two people doing an hour long set based on one word. It can be uh, 12 people doing a complete, you know, an improvised movie. It can be a million different things. Sure. Um, it just means that it is, I mean, it literally is the short versus longer uh, sets and shows and that sort of thing. Sure. Do you have a favorite game to play? <laughs> Uh, you mean like I do at Comic Cons? I have more. Yeah. Okay. Those are different. Yeah, I think um, at Comic Con I love. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a game called Rock Paper Scissor Infinity okay. that we played. If you were at the Rebels panel this year, you might have seen it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. At the so basically, what you do is you get you know eight people, however many you need, um, and you pair up two of them. And basically, instead of playing rock, paper, scissor, we say rock, paper, scissor, infinity. And on the word infinity, they pick anything they want in the entire world. It can be anything. It can be a chicken nugget. It can be Godzilla. It can be a small, it can be literally anything. And they tr strike the pose of whatever that thing is. And then I ask them what they are and they tell them they tell me what it is into the microphone and they tell what it is in the microphone and then the audience has to vote on is it uh you know elvis presley or is it a uh you know small child lost at the mall you know like it yeah, can yeah. Be it's completely arbitrarily who wins in that battle um Ooh. and it's my favorite game to play because i every time i play it i am legitimately crying laughing because you just never know what people are going to do. Yeah. Find these like what you think will be maybe like a quiet, small, and they just come up with something you never in a million years would have thought of. And that sure. is, the beauty. and that is why improv is the greatest because you're working with someone who will say something that would, you never would have thought of. And it's infinitely funnier than anything you could have come up with in that moment. Sure. Um, and the best thing is just seeing audiences just lose they, I don't want to curse. They lose their minds I mean, on. You can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they lose their minds and seeing people 
on that stage in front of like 5,000 people hearing a roar of laughter is like, oh, it's the, it's the greatest. It's the greatest. So yeah, I think that one is probably one of my favorites. That's a good one. That's a good one. And is the essence of comedy, really. And the best jokes, the reason it's funny is because you didn't see it coming. Didn't see and it. the fact that you have infinity in front of you, like, how is it not going to be fun? It's a good, it's a good game. It's it's really really fun, and it's it's risky because it is a bit of a setup, and it is a bit of a uh, you got to take risks. Like that's the one I usually play with critters and Critical Role fans. Um, but there was right. just something about rebels, and what we ended up doing for the rebels panel was I actually ended up pairing cosplay matches. So I had like Hera versus Hera. <laughs> <laughs> I had like uh, these really fun. Um, I had like a Rex versus a Rex, and it was just so. It was, it's one of my favorite memories from that celebration. I'm just like, there's some really good pictures from that of me just like laughing so hard. <laughs> it was just, it's, it's a genuine joy. And I know I keep saying that, but like, it's, it's just my favorite thing. It's so fun to be playing with everybody and just be there and having fun. Yeah. Is there any thinking back on that game? Is there one that sticks out where you're like, Ooh, <laughs> hoo, 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 that one. <laughs> Um, I remember that someone like this girl kind of just like lead completely flat on the ground. And, um, I, I want to make sure I'm remembering this correctly, mm -hmm. but my, what I believe happened is both girls laid down completely on the ground, like on their stomachs. And when I asked one girl what she was, she said, Anakin, I'm Mustafar. <laughs> oh, no. and I went to the other girl and whether she had planned it or not beforehand, she real quick went, his legs. <laughs> it, it was just like this moment of like, they just each became the different part of his body. And it was just so perfect for Star Wars celebration. And like, yeah, it was like an immediate yes. And of these two people who have never worked together. Right. Uh, worked together, you know, just yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. They, please. They're they now a comedy duo. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Traveling Let's country. start the conspiracy now. They were actually a two-person troupe. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it made me laugh so hard. And I'm, I'm like 99% sure that that was the way it turned. The wording might be a little bit different the way yeah. they did, but I remember being, basically being like the two halves of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So who won? Um, the legs? <laughs> I honestly, I think we honestly, I think we might have ended up on like, them both winning in that scenario. That's fair. Um, Two parts of a yeah, whole. Yeah, that's the game that I think surprises me the most. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to just the things people come up with and how game they are to just put it out there is unbelievable. It's like, I do this as a job. I've been doing, I've been like training and like, I'm training, you know, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. practice in front of these, you know, thousands of people. But like, if you've never done that before, Man, damn, the bravery yeah. it takes to get up there and just put yourself out there. I'm constantly in awe of the bravery and the confidence people have just throwing it out there. It's it's great. It makes me feel like they are just, I don't know, like it's just, to me, it's like it's celebration. It's Comic-Con. It's we are all here for a reason together. Yeah. And we're not going to make fun of you. We're not going to make you feel bad. We're all here to just celebrate what's happening. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That, that's my favorite thing about conventions is like, we're all here for the same reason. You, know, yeah. you like that thing. I like that thing. Like we, we don't know each thing. other, but we have that thing, you know, Yeah. it's like a cool, it, it's a cool place to be. And then you're like, Hey, let's do this thing. That's also fun before the thing you're here for. And it's, yeah. it's genius. It's a genius yeah, it's, idea. It's, it's it's great and it's I I genuinely cannot believe they pay me to do it. Yeah, like I <laughs> genuinely can't believe it because uh, it's just it's just me meeting new people and you know people that have like the same interests as me and just want to be silly and have fun, get some laughs, and you know just have a good time. It's it's the best thing. Yeah. Do you have a favorite convention? Oh, I can't. I, I couldn't possibly. I, I had to try. You know how it goes. <laughs> because everything is great. Every area is great for different reasons. Yeah. Um, celebration, I think, will always have a very special place in my heart. Um, I'm I'm a Star Wars girl. Uh, I have been forever. Well, not a yeah, girl, you're Star Wars. Brian, I've always thought that about you, that you're a yeah. Star Wars girl. I mean, kind of. At heart, I am. <laughs> I am the co-host of the Dorky Diva Show. Exactly. So. <laughs> well, you are. There's you a, are totally. I am in touch. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I don't know. And that's the only one I do that's like so specific about one thing. I agree. Um, 
you know? And so I think that's a very, very cool convention. I mean, that's one especially that I rolled into and was just like, you know, when I went to seven, you know, the, the one I first hosted in 2017, Mm -hmm. I had been for the last one that was in Orlando as a guest, right? right? Like I, so I had been there. And so this is something that was just this, such a weird feeling of just like five years ago, I think, I think it was 2012 or 20, 2009, maybe it was celebration five. Five. Oh yeah. Five would have been nine because six was 12. Yeah. That was in Orlando. Yeah. So I was at Celebration 5. Wow. Um, and so it was just this weird thing. And I went to like the last tour to Endor that night. And, yeah. Um, so to be doing all of that and then coming back like, just a few years later and being on that stage, there was something very, very magical about being a Celebration. But I love being in New York Comic Con because there are so many different stages and the audiences are New Yorkers and they're yeah. so great. And, and uh, those are always crazy. Seattle, the audiences are so warm and welcoming and I love the stages there. And I don't know, there's something very cool that every, I love every one of them for different reasons. Sure. Um, but yeah, maybe celebration is always going to have a special little place in my heart. Me too. But for the same reason, it's a con, but it's a specific con. It's yeah. like star Wars. Whereas yeah. other cons are celebrations of everything, which is great. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. if we can, if we can distill this down to the one yeah. we're like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that definitely just, that. Uh, there's something, and and the you know Chicago last year was just, uh, just such a, it was just the best. It was the best. I agree. Yeah. The fact that last day when it snowed or like yeah. that Saturday, it's like what was going on? It was just I don't know. And it was my first time because at my first convention, at first my first celebration, I wasn't on Twitter. I didn't have anything like that. Oh. And so this is the, that it was the first time that I had a connection to everyone in the crowd. Sure. And it was the first time yeah. I ever had opportunities of people being like, "Oh my God, you, you, you. Need it. <laughs> internet friends." Um, it was my first opportunity to meet uh, internet friends, and it was the best. Uh, so it was just yeah, there was something really delightful and special about it. It's neat. Is is there something like you find to be like a common misconception about what you do, like that you didn't see coming when you got the job? Where you're like, oh, this is this is different, huh? You mean that I thought yeah. it wasn't going to be, scary? and then versus <laughs> what other people might think the job entails that it doesn't. Oh, that's an interesting question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. I I think I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's I really don't know. I think it's very clear walking in of what this is in terms of like, these are the people and you will have to find a way to figure out to have fun with them. And (laughs) have fun. Yeah. Go, (laughs) go have fun. Um, so for me, um, yeah, I don't, I honestly, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Threw that one on you, didn't I? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, for me, I think I thought, I guess for me it was, I thought everybody, needed to be a certain way of like, well, everybody needs to do these, you know, dances and it needs to be all music based and needs to only be that, um, which was not suited to my strengths. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So I think for me that was very scary. But then when it was like, no, 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 do your thing. It made me be like, Oh, you can make this, this is going to be based on whoever is doing it. It's going to be based on what their strengths are and what they're good at. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for me, I thought it had to be a certain way of like, put your hands up, everyone. And, you know, yeah. which is something that does happen and something that I occasionally do because... <laughs> of course. Because yes happens. and, that's why. <laughs> I, I gotta yes and it, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, a, I don't have great rhythm. Um, <laughs> so, it, so just know, if you ever see me doing that, know that it is taking every yeah. ounce <laughs> of my concentration to keep moving on a beat. Uh, so just this know. is for you. <laughs> yeah, behind the curtain. Yeah. If you ever see me doing dance moves, just know it's taking all of everything I have to stay on beat. That's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I think that was probably my misconception as I thought it had to be one thing, but it's legitimately anything you want it to be as long as it is not about you. It is about the audience. Ooh. And about the- <laughs> Interesting. So what what kind of advice would you give to someone who wants to do the kinds of things that you do? Like, be it improv or be it yeah. warm ups at conventions or hosting panels you've done as well. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the thing for all of those things that ties it together is that it's not about you. Ooh, um, I like it. you know, okay. it's the interviews I think I've seen, you know, whether it's online or, you know, whatever, I think the interviews that suffer the most are the ones where the interviewer is like, 
well, this is how I got into your music and oh. this is how it, and it's like, you're so right. That's great. And I'm glad that that person is a fan. That's awesome. But people are here to listen to the person that's there, right? They're, yeah. they're the person that's being interviewed. Um, and for Comic-Con, like I keep saying, the greatest joy is bringing people up on stage and having them get the laughs, having them get the success, having them have those big moments. Um, that is what we are facilitating. We are facilitating a party, you know? And Ooh, so just remember, it, it is, you know? And, and so just remembering, you can't make it about you. Me standing on stage telling jokes and standing there and never going down into the audience and never bringing people up, that's, that's, that's about me. Yeah. But finding ways to bring joy and find ways to uh, let people tell their stories or let people have their moments. Um, I think just re remembering it's not about you and improv, it, it is not about you. The last thing you want in an improv show is to be like, you were the best one or you yeah. were the star. <laughs> there should not be a star. It should be everyone made this incredible thing happen out of literally nothing. Sure. Um, it should all be, you, know, you shouldn't be striving to be a star on an improv stage. Um, so I think if, if you want to be the star, you should do improv. I mean, you should do stand up. You know, be Ooh. you know do those because that's you, baby. That is you, you, you. Right. Um, don't worry about anybody else. It's totally you. Um, but I think hosting and I think improv and pan, you know, moderating and all that sort of stuff. I think a lot of that takes is just remembering that you are simply facilitating fun and facilitating a conversation that that is not about you. <laughs> sure. When you're doing like moderating a panel, because it's also different, it's a different type yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah. When you're moderating a panel, do you have like X amount of questions that you have to get to at the time beforehand, or is there a little bit of back and forth? Like, how does that work? Um, it depends on the person, it depends on their people. Uh, yeah. There are some panels that are very specific, like, please ask these, please don't ask these, you know, all that sort of thing. Sure. Um, I, I've been. I haven't done a ton of it mm -hmm. for me. It has been very, here's the person you're interviewing. And then it is completely up to me there you uh, go. To questions. Uh, and so I am a bit of an over preparer. <laughs> uh, uh, I like to pretend in my brain. I write as many questions as I can that are interesting. I go, as soon as I find out who I'm interviewing or the, you know, panels I'm doing, I try to watch a ton of information about them, like tons of go. interviews to do. And I try to avoid those questions they get all the time. Um, I try to avoid, uh, you know, anything that I know that could be potentially yucky or yep. make them uncomfortable. Um, but I also try to ask them things that will be interesting. And you also want to listen because that's another pitfall, I think, is when people yes. are like, asking a question, they get a, they get an answer and then something really unique happened in that answer. And, and then they, they just, just... <laughs> continue. Three, you know? Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I think part of that is still listening, which again is, is a big improv thing too. Yeah. Um, so I think those listening and just again is, yeah. So for the most part, it is just you making up questions. I remember my first, my first interview panel ever oh. was, um, five people from the cast of the office. What? Um, and it was my wow. first one. I was like, Deep in. Who, who said it was me? Who, <laughs> yeah. How is it possible that oh God, someone's oh letting me do this? Yeah. It should be an adult person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but of course, when I was asked, I was like, yes, of course. Yes, but of Always course. Always yes. yes. Yes and. Yes and. Of course. And I was very professional. And then I hung up the phone and screamed. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Because first things first, I'm a fan of so many of the things I get to do that, yeah. you know, I swallow that part. Uh, and yeah. then <laughs> when I'm hosting, it's different. I can be a total dork and yeah, you know, totally dork it up and be like, I love everything about this. Um, yeah. but I want to have that energy as a moderator. Sure. Uh, necessarily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember staying up the night before and like calling my husband at midnight and being like, wait a minute, do I need to bring up the fact that Steve Carell left the show? And like, <laughs> Where's oh. the line? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that, we all know this. Why would I bring that up? I'm no one. Right. Uh, so, and it was five people, so you want to make sure that, you know, they all get their moments. And it turned out it was the, the best because they are all comedians and improvisers. Nice. And so they were the best. They were so wonderful to talk to. And it was just so much fun. And there was no you know, lulls or moments of going, oh gosh, because they all just wanted to have fun and chit chat with each other and chit chat with, you know, answer questions and that sort of thing. So it was great. Sure. But I yeah, like that was, 
he gave me anything. It was just interview these five people. And really? I was like, okay. Just okay. go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So again, I'm a, I'm an over preparer and I had <laughs> stuff ready to go and all of my, you know, just all the research. And so I felt super prepared, but I like to prepare as if no one shows up and there's no Q and A. So if I can't rely on like, well, I only have six questions. I really hope the audience has questions. I prepare <laughs> as if it's a room of us and one person. Sure. So if we need to fill that full hour, just me and them, we can. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, uh, that obviously never happens. Um, but I like to just in case we have a very quiet audience or we roll through questions much faster or there's only a few questions from the audience. I try to have everything possible kind of covered and ready to go. That's smart. Especially because you can't account for what's going to happen. Because it could be anything. Like, how are you supposed to walk oh. into a room and be like, this is a, yeah, yeah. this is a quiet crowd. I uh, yeah. feel it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes it's a big main stage panel. But I also do the smaller panels that are in, like, the, the rooms that are throughout the convention center. Yeah. And sometimes those are really small. Um, you know, and so those are a completely different energy. And those are also the sort of, you know, you have to, like, if I came out, like how I do when I'm hosting, you know, and just be like, what's up, everybody? You know, and into yeah. a room of you know, 30 people, it's a huge turnoff. You just uh, hear so one just clap. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> people slowly get up and avoid eye contact. And yeah. Uh, so, the yeah. So, leaves. <laughs> yeah. So, I like doing both of those things. Um, they're both really, really fun in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the uh, moderating, I think, is a lot more pre work as opposed to hosting where you can sort of change course uh, depending upon what is exact. Like, you know, I could have something planned to be like, oh, this this is a, a silly costume. This is a very small child dressed as Darth Vader. I will bring him up on stage. Forget what I wanted to do. Let's bring this tiny child and have him force choke the audience. Right. Okay. Then you're like, that, that bit I was going to do, I can save. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think they both require a, a little bit of kind of preparation, of course, um, you know, both, uh, <clears throat> uh, getting information about the subject and, you know, whether it's a TV show or whether it's, you know, Star Wars or anything like that. Um, then of course there's the outfit planning. Um, oh boy. All that do you, stuff. do you have a process for outfit planning? Because oh, yeah. I feel like I'm you have to. Yeah. I'm a maniac. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's another thing. Fashion does not come easy to me. Uh, it me is neither. very, very difficult. Um, and so I've had friends who it does come easy to help me with things. Yeah. Um, and so kind of just help me figure out how to style this or what I could do. And so I've gotten, now that I know those tips, I've been, you know, better. Um, but I've been very lucky that I have a really good friend, um, my friend Jenny. Um, she's a cosplayer and she is a total nerd, loves Star Wars, like totally, you know, just like, like us. And she is also an incredibly talented seamstress. Um, so last year on the first day of Star Wars Celebration, I wore a, a skirt that she had made that was made out of all of these Star Wars trading cards. Oh yeah, um, I've seen photos yeah, of this. And, yeah, and she made it. Um, and wow, she, you know, just yeah. So she has helped me like come up with some really cool outfits. Um, I try to find things that uh, I haven't seen other people wear, just because nice. I like finding like I wore this really crazy Darth Maul dress on the day of the 20th anniversary panel of Phantom Menace um, that I found in this like really random like you know uh, art boutique kind of place where you could design you know where people put up their designs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it doesn't come easy to me. So I'm planning things out in advance. I try to theme them if I can, I like it. Um, to like specific to the panel. But sometimes it's just going to be, you know, something very silly. Or like I found a Jurassic Park dress that's um, it's Mr. DNA from. Oh sweet, um, it's in and, your like, blood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I try. Uh, so that there's no Jurassic Park panels anywhere. But that is, I couldn't not Yet. buy that. What am I going to do? Uh, you know, so though that's not themed to a panel on that day, it is a super recognizable thing to folks at comic cons and to folks that have our passion for things like that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so sometimes I try to theme it and sometimes if I just find something really, really cool, uh, and silly, I, I'm like, Oh, well, I gotta buy that. So I like it. I like it. So that's a lot of my time, but yeah, that, that's, those are also, I mean, it's so fun that I get paid to wear these absurd outfits that, yeah. um, of wearing and, you know, have, have a good time with. So yeah, sure. It's a lot worse ways to make money. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm also fashionably challenged. It's the worst. Yeah, and Savannah's the opposite. And I'm like, just what? What do I wear? 
get it. Savannah is like she's the worst. <laughs> she's the worst. She's a literal. First of all, she's a literal model. So yeah, that it's terrible. It's then, awful. Like, I hate it. And she puts on. She can make stuff. It's like, come on. That's the worst part. She's like. Hmm. I have this fabric. The next day, she's modeling a dress she made. I was like, we honestly, that's we can't be truly. friends. My confidence yeah. is already very low, and you're like, what is this? Come <laughs> what on. What is this? Yeah, cutest button, sweetest person. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Savannah fan for sure. Yeah. She's actually going to be my next Comic Con in uh, like two weeks is Emerald City, which is in Seattle. Um, and so she'll be out there. So I'll actually get sad at her, uh, which will be fun. She's terrible. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys um, get paired up, like doing dorky diva stuff? We, so, so I was a fan of hers for a really long time, like, before we even met, because she had a blog that was about, like, it was called, like, lightsabers, photos, and pandas, or whatever it was, and I was like, lightsabers on Google, I'm like, cool, there's a girl that likes Star Wars, that's also cool, and I love yeah. pandas, too, so I, <laughs> so I saw her blog, and then I had her on this show a few years ago, because I was cool. like, hey, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get to know you and have you on my show, I think yeah. it'd be cool, and she was like, sure. And over the course of an hour and a half, you hear us go from not knowing each other to becoming best friends. Oh, that's and so fun. She, she, so she was like, you should come on my show. I just started a podcast. I was like, I don't know if you want to do that. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah come on. And I was like, all right. So it was like episode one was Ashley Eckstein. Episode two was Amy Radcliffe. Episode three was me. I was like, what are you yeah. doing? Why would you Same. tank your show oh, out yeah. the gate? <laughs> yeah. Like, you're going to tank your show right out the gate. Um, <laughs> and so she was like, this went really well. And then, like, maybe three weeks later, she's like, so I was thinking about doing a new co-host every time, but, like, would you want to come on, just be the co-host? And I'm like, so cool. yeah, I would love to be the dorky dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then so she's awesome. regretted it every day since. So it's That's worked it. out. That's Speaking better. of contractually obligated to stay up there. Uh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> us. She's contractually obligated to feed me at least twice a week. And there that's how that happened. That's uh, awesome. So another thing I'm wondering, on the other side of it, yeah, what do you do if you're in a room and it isn't going well? Because I imagine it's mm -hmm. terrifying, but mm -hmm, also yes. a very important thing to know. Yeah. Brian, this is where a <laughs> tactic that has been known throughout history as confidently BSing your way <laughs> through <laughs> anything. Um <laughs> Uh, I have confidently BSing has become like a phrase I use with people like that are figuring it. out improv. Like I'm so nervous. I'm like confidently BS it. That's yeah. all you have to do is just, just confidently go. BS. They don't know. Uh, yeah. So, um, I've been pretty fortunate in that. Like I haven't felt a ton of times that it's been like, Oh, this is, uh -oh. this is a burning building. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Um, I have, I, I'm very lucky in that I have great partners in the DJs I work with. Um, and I have great luck in that I have had just ridiculously supportive audiences. Mm -hmm. Um, so there have been bits that maybe went a lot shorter than I thought or things that didn't hit as hard. And in moments like that, um, it's really nice to have a DJ because the DJ will then like come out and do some of that, like, uh, get everybody get on your feet dancing, you know, that kind of stuff, which like whoever right. wants to do that, wants to do it. And that's like a good high energy thing. Sure. Um, but for me, it, it's never been, I've come out and it's just been like, I mean, of course, like day one of any con I do for the first like three hours, I'm like, well, everyone hates me. And that's <laughs> yep. just the way it yep. is. Yep. Um, you know, but there also is a, a learning curve for everyone, you know, because people don't always expect what we do to be happening. And so I think True. there is a bit of a, wait, what is this now? Um, and so I always very quickly try to be like, I am a huge dork uh, in that, like, I will make an idiot of myself. I will always look like a doofus. There I will go. never make fun of anybody. Mm -hmm. You are always supported when you are on my stage. Like, I try to get all of that across without saying all of that. Right. Um, I try to just very quickly show everyone that like this is who i am uh and i hope that you will accept me as one of you yeah um, and that we can have fun together you know so i try to put that out there as soon as possible um and every audience is every city is different every audience is different every panel is different yeah. um and so for me as a host i think a lot of it is just paying attention to my surroundings and realizing okay if this is something that there are there are crowds where you can just do crowd work and walk around and chit chat with people and it's like gangbusters yeah. and then there's times where that's not going to work <laughs> yeah. uh, because there are a lot of people who do not want to chat with you and so doing something 
up on stage will be better because then you can bring those 10 people who really want to participate can have a good time. So I think just remembering that, like, again, it's that pivoting if you need to and keep people happy and really kind of continue to read the room. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think my favorite wins are ones when, uh, it's someone who maybe at the beginning of the con, like wasn't super into it or, maybe seemed a little bit shy and reserved and I was able to kind of coax them out of their shell and then they just like kill it at something. Um, those are the times where I try to at least read the room that I don't want to, I never want to give up and be right. like, okay, well, they don't want this. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ooh, that didn't work. Peace. <laughs> and he, yeah, I guess this is the worst and I'll leave you alone. You never want to do that. So again, I confidently BS my way through anything and I try to pivot with a smile on my face to something better or something people will like. Um, Thankfully, I've never had anybody like say anything real mean to my face. You yeah. know, I've never had anybody be like, you're the worst as right. I'm walking by. <laughs> um, maybe they have. I just haven't heard them. Yeah, right, right. Um, mm. You know, and so I think uh, that's helpful that for the most part, I think it's a really nice kind of uh, I, it feels like it's been a pretty respectful relationship. And again, maybe I just have blinders on and I'm so busy in my stuff that I don't notice that uh, there's 100 people giving me a thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't notice that. Um, but good. I've had, uh, I've had good luck with, with that. And I, I try to stay very in tune with what the temperature of the room is in terms of what we should be doing. I try, I don't always succeed. Um, but thankfully I've either erased the really bad ones from my brain, yeah. <laughs> uh, or feel like just like improv, they were gone. It's never coming back. It's never going to be the same. So it's, it, I, what is the point of me dwelling on it? You know? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I think that's smart. I think yeah, it's also I've, good to have that sort of mentality as well, you know, to go in and to be able to let go, but also like, yeah, to confidently just be like, here's a thing that I don't know, but let's figure it out. I think it's a good yeah. skill to have as well as the improv training. It's like, it's almost like everything you've done has led to this. I, oh. It's almost, wow. as, I'm telling you, it's so wild to me that I get to do this because it's just like, this exists. Like, yeah. I've had people like, how do I get this job? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. How did this happen? <laughs> this is the greatest thing I get to do. And now I'm here and I hope they just keep having me here. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm just as so. surprised as you are. <laughs> yeah. Look, Brian, legitimately, <laughs> like, not a joke. It is shocking to me uh, that, that, that I get to do this. I'm nobody. And I get to have th this like dream of just being up on stage, having a time with a bunch of different people. Sure. It's great. As somebody who has been in your audiences before, I'm very glad you are doing it because you're very good at it. It's a good time. Thank you. It's a good time. You're Thank very good you. at, you said, facilitating a good time. Thank you. That's all I wanted to do. It's a, it's, uh, I know I keep saying I'm a broken record, but it makes me so happy. And I just, knowing that I have Comic-Cons on my schedule coming up and it's just like, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. I feel like I get to go see my friends, you know, it's just, it's fun. Yeah. I love it. I love but, that it makes you happy because it makes us happy as well. Uh, awesome. But just like that, we've been talking for over an hour. I can't look believe at, it. I look was at so that. I have nothing interesting to say, and I hope I do. Well, that's why I'm here. Um, that That's another thing that like it, I think is important is finding something you are genuinely interested in, like you said. You know, like if you're interested in the thing, then that's going to come through. And uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a long time. because I know. I, we finally made it work. We did. We made it happen. And I'm so glad because this was great. This was really oh, cool. Thank you so, so much. And you're a fabulous interviewer. You Stop made it. me feel comfortable. And it's so weird because I feel like I've, I feel like I know you because like, yeah, I've same. heard your podcast, heard you on Dorky Diva. You have not. And so it's just this weird <laughs> thing where it's like, I have, I think, <laughs> if I'm talking about it, I think, because was the Clone Wars, was like reviewing Clone Wars one of your first episodes? We did do that. I couldn't tell you. We, did, we, we the most recent episode we did. We got into a really big argument because we're like siblings at this point. Yeah, of course. You know, and it's like God bless her for putting up with me. But we <laughs> apparently I had bugged her for like half a year. I was like, we gotta review episode eight, and she was like, all right. Sure. So we did, but then she didn't like it, and then she turned around, and then she liked. It. I was like, we gotta do it again, but I don't remember ever bugging her for that. So she was That's like, really for six months you've been saying we need to do that. I was like, I don't think I did. <laughs> she gets, like, I've got the receipts. Yeah, yeah, she gets so riled up. It's my favorite. <laughs> but no, I swear, I swear, because I don't think I realized you were on the show. And then I was looking at, um, like, going back in, like, the feed, and I found, like, Clone Wars review episodes. And I was like, yeah. oh, I want to do this. Yeah. And, I remember, <laughs> and I feel like I remember her being like, yeah, now you're part of the show. You're just, I feel like, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I maybe. To a bunch of them. 
but maybe I'm, I'm wrong. But I feel like it was one of those where you guys were doing the Clone Wars. But it always makes me laugh because you were always so detail oriented in terms of like, <laughs> it seems like when it's, you know, like prequels, you're just like, here it is. Oh, yeah. This is every name of every <laughs> background person, droid. Kid. Like, she'll be yeah. like, what's the droid again? You're like, oh, what? It's in it. And I'm just like. Oh yeah, yeah. She gets she gets riled up. It's so funny. Yeah. Also, because she's she's like you. She's very she's over prepared. She has show notes. I don't. Oh, yeah. I out of spite don't ever use them. So she. <laughs> so that's like out the, of spite. Yeah, the running gag of our show is like she does all these show notes, and I'm like, we'll just talk about like, Star Wars. Well, like, yeah, like well, I can I can literally do this all day. What are we doing? She's like, you know the show. I'm like, we're just gonna talk about Star Wars. Like, just give me a microphone. We're fine. But she's like wrote a dissertation of like, all right, here's the thing. I'm like, I'll just whatever you say. Sure, you want to talk about lightsabers? We can talk about lightsabers. You know, she's fun. No, it, yeah, it always just makes me laugh when you like throw out all these crazy details, and you guys both just have such wealth of Star Wars knowledge, and it's just. But you both have like different views and different sides. It's no, it's it's a good match. I can totally get why you guys get along. Yeah, she's always wrong. Uh, but before I let you go, um, <laughs> gotta get the digs in when I can because exactly. I'm the captain now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where can people find you online to uh repeat my sentiments that you're awesome oh you're the sweetest um so. or you know just find me and tweet things that they don't like about yeah. me <laughs> uh, thankfully that doesn't ha- thankfully almost never do they actually find my ad and say things thankfully i don't actually find my, my handle um but yeah so twitter is probably where i'm most active um on twitter i am geek host amanda Love so it. g-e-e-k-h-o-s-t amanda Beautiful. Um, and then I am the same name on Instagram. Um, I mostly during conventions, I'm, I'm very, very active. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try to stay a little bit active on Instagram. Um, and yeah, those are going to be the, the best two places uh, to think. Love it. This was great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Brian. And. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.